I'm driven to destroy! Hey everybody, I'm Eric. I'm Ty. And we are Shantoto Cast. Coming Woo. back at you again with another final episode. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I overdosed on tryptophan. Yeah. I don't know how much time I have left to live. Mm -hmm. um, that, that turkey did, really did me in on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, I, I just... Too much. I feel the gravy pulsing through my veins. I had a leftovers waffle this morning, and it Woo. was just... It's great, but... It's, it's going to spell the end for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're both just going to die. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, we recorded this on Black Friday, hmm. but, um, yeah. you know, something tells me that we're not going to make it a whole week. Yeah, we'll So see. we'll upload this episode, and you might not hear from us ever, ever? again. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so because I always have to say this, today, this episode, uh, Worlds wrapped up last week. Uh, mm -hmm. Today's Black Friday. We just had Thanksgiving, et cetera, et cetera. It was fun. Everything's chill. Worlds was great. We got to watch a lot of stuff. I invested in Hunes, Huns, Hain, Hain, and now I'm sitting on sixty-one of them. <laughs> well, fifty-eight because I put a place in my deck. Let's make it clear: you and Bill <laughs> basically bought out all the internet on it. Yeah. And so the Midwest now has a solid command yeah. on a staple card for World of Final <laughs> Fantasy decks. <laughs> Ties a piece of garbage. Yeah. Yep, but... Uh, now it looks like your only options are Envy Games and other private sellers that aren't on public for public platforms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, everybody. Yeah, good luck. Ha ha. Got em. <laughs> But anyway, uh, so for this episode, once again, Worlds just happened, so we decided... You know, we just had Worlds of Opus X. Mm -hmm. It's basically the third... An or we're close closing in on the third anniversary of the game. We are. Um, so we're going to look back, not just to the second anniversary, not back to the first anniversary not even to opus one we've got to go back farther we're gonna hop in the delorean and go back to the future and but first we have to go back to the past so we can go to the because that's how the first one went anyway you're right yeah. <laughs> uh so we're looking at chapters so this was an episode that i think we mentioned this during our box opening of opus we've 10. talked about this so yeah. many times and never done it yeah so and i wrote this i think i wrote this script like close to almost a month you ago this now over a month ago yeah and obviously it's not a, i think this is probably going to be one of the first episodes that we'll never have to revisit <laughs> yeah we'll never see chapters again in theory yeah uh yeah in theory um but yeah so i looked into it i did a little research i found every mechanic that was in chapters um that just hasn't been brought over to opus and vice versa and mind you there's much less that hasn't been brought over to opus or that there's much less that's in opus that wasn't in chapters than vice versa but we will be kind of talking about um a couple things right but we'll kind of get into that but uh, yeah, do you want to start off with the similarities between chapters and Opus? Yeah, let's go into the easy stuff here. Um, so the similarities between chapters and Opus, th there are some, right? It wasn't a completely different card game like some people believe, uh, if some people even heard of chapters. Mm. Um, but some of the similarities include some of the basic stuff that we already know, right? Forwards and backups, um... They're just the essential parts of the game, uh, the common ground between both versions. They operate the exact same way. Um, not a whole lot has changed on that front. Yeah. Uh, we have monsters, same as above, uh, but they actually started out a little bit later in chapters, yeah. um, as opposed to our premiere he here with Opus in Opus 4. Yeah. Um, and the, they operate basically the exact same. <laughs> yeah, they are effectively artifacts from magic slash enchantments yeah and then they sit and then they do stuff yeah slash artifact creatures slash like, yeah, yeah they fill all that yeah um and then we have the keywords of like brave first strike haste freeze stuff like that um these keywords were also present in chapters and they very clearly carried on over to opus uh yeah. we can tell from even opus one that yeah. it was all there and then uh, the first kind of change is back in chapters, instead of summons, they had Eidolians. Or, I, Eidolans. Eidolans, there we go. Yeah. I haven't played 12. Um, <laughs> so they were called chap they were called Eidolans, but acted exactly the same. Instant speed. Um, I think the only real difference... No, they had modular cards back then. I think they did. But, um, yeah, it was just kind of the same. A lot of them were actually kind of weak. Like, especially if you look at, like... The original Ifrits, and if you look at... I think the original Battle 4 is actually pretty bad. 
No, I think I thought the Valfor was exactly identical. Maybe it was. I'm, I'm having trouble remembering specific cards, but just some of them just weren't good. It took them a lot longer to get good. Yeah. Because <laughs> it wasn't until, like, Opus 10, or their Chapter 10, in which we saw, like, summons that were kind of equal to our, yeah. like, Chapter 3, or our Opus 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally was EX Bursts. Damage was taken the same in Chapters. EX Bursts worked exactly the same as in Chapters. Um, it, it's kind of what we've come to expect. It's right. the main core mechanics of this game ultimately haven't changed. Right. And people who went from playing Chapters to Opus 1 probably kind of saw a bit of that. They're like, okay, this mm-hmm. is kind of the same game. They're ramping things up a little bit. Yeah. New card pool. But we're going to start with what Chapters have that we don't. And get ready for this. Because when I was doing this up, when I was writing the script, I was like, okay, there's going to be like five or six things. There's tons of things. There's so much weird stuff. And some of it can make its way over. But a lot of it can't, and in a couple ways, some things already have. Well, it's... let's say let's say not that they can't, that they shouldn't. Yeah. They really, really shouldn't. Yeah. So the first thing that we're gonna mention, and this is a thing a lot of people have asked for. Mm-hmm. I I want to say this because I'm pretty sure it's true, but I remember the designer said that they don't want to bring items over, and so items were introduced to chapter nine. So it was already kind of about halfway through the lifespan of the game. Mm-hmm. It's already before where we are now. Right. Um, and they were just kind of like broken up into three categories. There was weapon, armor, or accessories. They attach the characters and buff them and supplement them their effects, or they make they give them a new effect. Uh, and then they break with the character if the character is broken. Um, but some also have like kind of these like return to hand effects. Um, but they were weird. It's it's interesting. So if you've played Magic, um, you probably know about artifacts. These were actually closer to auras, mm-hmm. where you just slap it onto a creature. As soon as it's dead, you lose the aura too. Um, and it's weird. So to properly explain it, uh, for all of these instances, I wrote down a sample card. Mm-hmm. So let's take the one drop ice item, black glasses. It was an equipment for a forward or backup. A character who equips black glasses cannot be chosen by opponent's abilities and won't receive damage from the opponent's abilities. Remove zero. So you could just pay zero to remove it. Okay. I think that only happened at sorcery speed, so you can only do it during your turn. Which makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That would be a little bit broken if you could just change and swap it around on any point of the game. That'd be gross. Yeah. But it was just kind of a simple card. It just had a simple effect. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a lot of the examples that are going to be in here. It's just something straightforward. Um, and it looks like we won't see this in the current iteration of FFTCG, yeah. um, which disappoints me greatly. I was, I, I'm ecstatic. I would love to see this in the current game and how it would shift things. Granted, I wanted, I, I would want to see it way down the line, right? Yeah. Like towards the end of the game coming out, yeah. right? When they're like, okay, it's guys, Opus 21. I think it's time to start ramping down, yeah. you know, a little bit. We'll pop out like four more sets, and they'll have items in them. Yeah. That'll be that. Um, but I, w- I w- again, I would be ecstatic if we saw items in the game at any point. Yeah, and like when I was looking through these, there's a lot of like good items, mm-hmm. but it wasn't as broken as I thought it would be. Like a big thing with, um, I'm just gonna throw them under the bus. The big thing with Force of Will is that basically equipment kind of ruined the game, and now they're bringing it back. <laughs> so I'm a little. I, I don't play Forcible currently. I have a deck for it. Um, but I'm a little worried about it. <laughs> we'll have to ask the local guys how they feel. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But, um, so when... We've talked about items before. Not mm-hmm. on the show, but we've kind of talked about Right, you and I have touched yeah. on it. And obviously you like them. I was always kind of against putting them in. Because I'm like, yeah, it's something we don't have to. Monsters kind of fill the same role. But after researching them... They weren't really that good. Like, there was a couple cards that I was looking at, like, oh, you know, if this was on this card in our current game, that'd probably be a little busted. But it was never anything, like, actually substantial. It was just like, oh, that would be good. Yeah. No, that's that's what I would like. I would yeah. like something that's just okay. Yeah. Something that it's an option. It's a tech choice. Yeah. If somebody could find a way to make it meta, yeah. that'd be cool. But, like, it's just kind of that mid, mid-level to low-level yeah. players kind of... I don't want to say crutch, yeah. but something that they can rely on to help them learn the game better. Yeah. Um, just to kind of change things up. So, something that you'd have unexpected just show up on the battlefield. Yeah. Oh, also I want to say this now before we get too deep into it. Um, we previously mentioned on the show about how 
a lot of stuff in chapters is too good for Opus. Mm -hmm. When doing research for the show, I found out we weren't exactly wrong, but there were a lot of duds in chapters. Oh, yeah, Like, there were so many cards that would fill our, like, H's and L slots that I'm like, that's not a good card. Yeah. (laughs) Or like, wow, that's really underwhelming. Like, there was a good chunk of them, and that kind of surprised me. But, Hmm. um, uh, like I said, uh... Equipment was kind of that same thing, where I was just like, it's going to be busted, it's going to be broken, and then I'm looking through the cards, and I'm like, mm, yeah. yeah. not everything in Chapters is broken. Yeah. What so, a concept. Let's move on to the next uh, big key thing. Is it a keyword? What is, what's yeah, going on Yeah, these here? are technically keywords. Okay, so we're going, on, we're going into keywords. Cool. So uh, we have Awakening. Uh, a card with this action ability can be used to search and play to the field a card with the same name as the one using the ability. To use an awakening, you must pay the cost specified. Yeah. So part of the cost uh, of the effect usually contains putting the card into the break zone to avoid name conflict. Basically, lets you use an effect similar to Onion Knight or um, maybe Magic Pot. Yeah. Um, it swaps the card. A really good way to cycle through the deck and get additional ETBs. Uh, and then Ty, do you want to cover the example card here? Yeah. So uh, Black Bolt three, two drop lightning forward, three thousand power. Um, Awakening 1, so you pay 1. Move Black Waltz 3 to the break zone. Uh, When Black Waltz 3 is moved from the field to the break zone, choose 1 forward, it gains minus 3,000. They worded stuff weird in chapters. It gains minus 3,000 power until end of turn. So it's, like Eric mentioned, it's kind of like an Onion Knight effect where you're kind of cycling through them. Uh, Also reminds me of Palom and Porum that we have. Oh, yeah. And it's weird because we do have like this kind of version of it. And Mm -hmm. we'll see another version of Palom and Porum later in here. Um, but it's much more robust yeah. versions. They they yeah. really thought that part yeah. out later on. Yeah, you also said like magic pot. It's like yeah. every it's a card that has its own magic pot on it. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting. And all out of all the cards that I looked at, none of them seem broken with it. Maybe later it restricts design space because you can't make something with a good enough ETB with the same right name. where they can recur like, it a million times. Like imagine if there was like a two drop cloud. That had, like, oh, when this dies, deal 5k to something. And then you could just play the 5 drop and be like, oh, deal 3k to something. Yeah, oops, killed. Um, And then, will we see this in FFTCG? My current bet is on no. Uh, We've seen... We may see a cycle of cards that have a similar ability, but I don't think we'll ever really see this keyword. Yeah, I can imagine uh, a cycle of characters, or even just a character who's special, yeah. is swap this character out for another one, yeah. repeat both characters' ETBs or something. Yeah. So, like, the the card I use here was Black Waltz 3. Right. Um, for people who pl- have played 9, or if you've played the first like third, third of the game, like, yeah. <laughs> like, you run into Black Waltz a lot. And it, it would make sense. It's kind of, like, flavorful. Mm-hmm. And then another character that might be like this is, like, Scarmi- Scarmiglio. So we, yeah, that would make um, sense. Maybe even, like, a Magus Sisters that has this kind of similar effect. Yeah. But that would be yeah. busted. Yo, Especially with our current... Oh, could you imagine being able to cycle through six Magus Sisters? That card will go from 50 cents <laughs> to, like, $9 yeah. overnight the second uh, that card gets spoiled. Yeah. but So it's an interesting effect. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. It'd be mm-hmm. cool, but we just... I don't I, think there's a use for it anymore. Exactly. It's outdated. Yeah, it's a little outdated, and it'd be... It's a little bit too... Um, it's a little bit too good. It's too good, but it's also clunky. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a little both. Yeah. Uh, and then moving on to our next keyword, uh, we have assist. So this keyword was exclusive to backups, which is something that you don't really see. Yeah, that's rare these uh, days. It allows the player to like flash in a backup and then use them anytime that they would use a summon. But after the effects resolve, the character just break the card breaks itself. So just everything has back attack. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everything, it like I said, it's basically like turning backups into summons. Um, but the assist effect is not an ETB. Like the card's like a vanilla outside of it, and mm-hmm. that was kind of weird. Um, that balances it though it does balance it it does balance it because the thing is you could use it as like a lot of them are like just two drop backups Mm -hmm. or three drop backups and like playing a two a vanilla two drop backup would suck but it's still like okay but playing a vanilla three drop backup no that would would be harsh yeah so uh you do need a backup slot to use this effect because you have to have five um or you have to have less than six rather uh and then it makes for a slightly more flexible summon, though having to keep a back- backup slot open can be, or having to keep a one sec, having to keep a backup slot open can be rough, especially in our current game. Like we oh usually God, try to yeah. race. Oh God! Yeah, everybody's ramping immediately. Yeah, um, 
So to have this where you have to have a slot open just to use these like pretty good effects. Yeah. Probably not great. Uh, it was introduced in Opus Three, and I think it was only used like once or twice outside of that. I think it was just showed up in like one later set. Mm -hmm. um, and then, do you want to do the uh, example card? Yes, the example card we have here is a Blue Mage. It's a two-drop water backup. Big surprise. Uh, and its assist ability is choose a forward of cost five or more. Return it to your hand. Yeah. Um, Mind you, that can't target an opponent. Well, yeah, I, the wording yeah. is just weird on these. The tra well, it's a translation. I'd assume yeah. is not as descriptive yeah so it's either return something that you control back to your hand or, or five costs or more or return it to the hand I, yeah the once again the translations aren't great right so will we see this in the current trading card game again probably not um <laughs> again might be an effect that ends up in a cycle but it doesn't really it's not really something that would see much of a use in the larger scale um even in chapters it wasn't apparently very useful around except for maybe the third set and maybe a little bit after yeah. that, I imagine. Yeah, it's it's just weird. Like yeah, it's it's not it's not very flexible and like it's like okay cool. So I could run basically like twenty two backups and not feel super bad about it. But it's just the fact that you have to keep a backup slot open for it. Yeah, is... I'd rather be I'd rather have what we have now where it's like yeah. break this back up or, you know, yeah. remove this from game or yeah. return it to hand for X effect, yeah. because then at least you have the ability to choose when you clear that backup slot and you can refill it later, mm. instead of just a flash in the pan where you don't get to keep that thing on the field. Yeah. You can, you know, you don't get to dull it on command or whatever. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, yeah, like Ty said, it's not flexible, it's super yeah. rigid. Yeah, because if this came with, so if this was paired up with like a card, like let's say a forward that I, I don't care how much it costs, but it was like whenever you break a backup deal 3k or something, yeah. that'd be cool, because it's just like, oh, I get to do that and then get that on top of it, mm -hmm. but not really, like, it's just not good enough. Like, it's just kind of eh. Yeah. Yeah. It's just disappointing. So, um, next, we're moving on, we have Blue Magic. So, similar to Assists, but with monsters, and it acts more like a summon. Uh, gives monsters a bit more utility, which is actually pretty cool. Um... And in a way, it's similar to the discard cycle we received in Opus 7, uh, but it packs a bit more of a punch compared to the free discard effects. Um, it's con considered an action ability from the hand, which I find really interesting. Yeah, because we don't really have any in chapters. We don't, yeah, like, we minus don't. outside, like, the, but even the discard effect is still weird. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's odd. Yeah, right? So, um, the example card here is G Deleter. It's a two-drop ice monster. Um... And that's, uh, what is that, a white? Or what, what's the what's the cost there? Oh, uh, yeah, that's like a, a one colorless. One color, yeah, okay, so so colorless. Uh, put G to leader in the break zone. Choose one forward, deal it damage, uh, deal it damage equal to its power minus a thousand. Yeah, which is the modern wording. Because right. now it's like a thousand less than its own power. Yeah, I, I'm just reading yeah. that. I'm like, I need yeah. to translate this. <laughs> yeah. um, and then blue magic uh, is... One ice. One ice. Choose one forward. Deal it damage equal to half its power. Round it up to the nearest thousand. Yeah. Um, and will we see this in FFTCG? Actually, maybe. Yeah. Actually, maybe. We've seen effects like this before. Uh, and even if it's not called the same thing, not given a keyword, it might show up. Um, and I wouldn't mind that. I yeah. wouldn't be. I wouldn't be gunned for it. I, you know, I wouldn't gripe if it happened. Or you know, I wouldn't be upset, yeah. heartbroken if it didn't happen. Because yeah. like the, um, uh, what was I gonna say? Like the discard cycle was popular, and people liked it. I personally loved it. Oh, I it's thought it was great. Yeah, it's probably one of my favorite cycles. It's really in the game. good. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic because it just gave these cards that didn't have stellar effects just a little bit mm -hmm. more. Um, elasticity, like they were, they were just better to use, and they felt better to just kind of put into your deck because you're like, oh well, you know, if I can't use it for this, I can use it for this. Yeah. Um, so to see this would be cool. I, I wouldn't mind seeing it, even if it's not a keyword. Um, mm -hmm. but I could imagine this being on a cycle or two of just you know monsters that it's just like, oh, discard this and pay this. Yeah, I, I think they would have. I think they should and would avoid making it a keyword. Yeah. But yeah, seeing this would definitely diversify things a little bit, at yeah. least for a while. I could see this happening in one of the shakeup sets. Uh -huh. Um, for actually, you know, I don't think we mentioned this before. Um, I, I kind of have a theory on their cycle of uh sets, kind mm -hmm. of how similar to how they do cycles of cards within sets. Yeah. They do a standard set. They do a shake-up set, and they do a power creep set. Not necessarily in this order, 
But every three groupings of sets we get in Opus, they do have some sort of um, archetype. Yeah. Of of exactly what I said. So there's you know the standard sets, kind of they just are good. They're just cards yeah. that we that the game needs to progress. Yeah. And then there's the shake up set, which is like a whoa, what is this? This is gonna make things interesting. Yeah. And then there's just the raw power creep, which is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. Because from how I'm looking at it. And because I have a kind of similar theory, because um, when Opus Five came out, we called it the new Opus One, mm-hmm. and then when Opus Ten came out, we there's been some words flying around like, oh, it's kind of the new Opus Five where we're getting a lot of these like crazy cards. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's literally like standard set, shake up set, standard set, shake up set, power creep, standard set, shake up set, like it kind of goes. Yeah, but weird... I would argue Opus Eight was kind of a power creep one yeah. a little bit. Yeah, Opus Eight was really. You could good. you could really argue that it was a shake up or a power creep. Yeah, and you know maybe this is a different discussion for a different episode. Yeah, yeah. but um, the idea remains that that's one of those shake up sets. If uh-huh. we're right, is a hundred percent something this would be in. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, but to move on to one that's very near and dear to my heart. So we. Mind you, this this one by itself takes up a page. I was gonna say, wow, notes. yeah, you. And it's because the description clearly. is so it's so complicated Jesus. for like no reason. Yeah, okay. but it was we talked about this before. <laughs> we have um, talked about this before because we literally. So when I told them I was doing this episode, I mentioned uh, items, and I was like, I never want to see items in the game, and they're like, No, I want to see them. And I was like, Yeah, but I want to see this in the game. And you're like, No, we <laughs> so, <laughs> just completely yeah. disagree. And we're like, Oh, cool, we got a discussion. But mm-hmm. so this is combination. So. Strap in, because this is going to be a little bit. The combination ability can be used to lower the cost of the card bearing it. You can exclude any or all cards mentioned, provided that you could find them in your break zone, and the cost of the card is decreased by the amount specified in the parentheses after the card names. On Cloud-Red 13, ability Combination Cloud 3, Red 13 3, for example, you can look for one of each Cloud and or Red 13 in your break zone and exclude it-them. Uh, exclude in this case means remove from play. I was, gonna, um, I was just about to yeah. clarify. The cost of Cloud-Red 13 is decreased by the amount specified if you do so. For example, excluding a cloud card will drop cloud red 13's cost from 7 to 4. Excluding both a cloud and a red 13 will decrease the cost from 7 to 1. Whew. Okay. Basically, it allows you to get a discount on a forward that bears two character names by just exiling the cards from your break zone that share the name with the card. Um, And it didn't show up until the final set, which was 15. Um, rightfully so, because that's when they just went all out. Just... Yeah, this sounds broken as yeah. shit. Uh, so, this strikes a kind of weird balance, because it would be optimal to run both of the cards to get the full discount, but if one of the name cards isn't good, it's card you're running just to get the combination card a discount later in the game, and when it's present, it eats up three names that a card can have, one for each character, and then the third for the combination name. So, it's... Really interesting. Uh, I'll go into the example card before we start talking about it. Well, do, I mean, do um, we even need to, though? You kind of are, kind of went into yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but to kind of show how powerful these cards were. Right. Um, so, oh, this is why I want to talk about the job class that this one has. Cloud-Red 13, 7-drop, 9k, fire for forward with job, those who fight. <laughs> and there's, all of the combination cards had, like, weird like, jobs. Silly job. Okay, yeah, cool. and it was cool. Uh, combination, Cloud-Red 13, 3. I mentioned before haste when a forward you control is attacking choose one forward you could deal 4,000 damage to it so it's kind of like a rain effect really, right on yeah. everything and then Ooh. you have howling moon which is a special all forwards you control gain 1,000 power haste and first strike preemptive strike attack in the original until end of turn Ew. so it's a non-activating shoal with first strike <laughs> Oh, that's gross. It's, this is why it was the last set. Like, it was... Yeah. Man. So... This is why I don't want this crap. Yeah. That's nasty. Yeah. And then I to go and imagine the rest. And then to finally put in my own little bullet point between everything was... Obviously, these cards are very strong. <laughs> yeah, you, you straight yeah. up put it in the notes. Yeah. Like, this is broken. It yeah. should never happen. And while it's <laughs> overcosted, it could be discounted. And... So this is when we're going to kind of get into discussion about it. So will we see this in FFTCG... Uh, I said I hope so, but I'm not optimistic. There are really cool cards and great bits of flavor. They have a lot of like design space to explore with cards like this. And with the Decidia series being present in Opuses, it would be great to see unlikely combinations like cards. Like I thought of um, Laguna Cloud of Darkness. Mm-hmm. 
because of, there's just their little story moment. And like, oh, you're, yeah. <laughs> there'd be tons of those because they're in the same color. Like, yep. there's so much design space. But if they're brought here, however, they would be severely weakened because being able to pay one for a 9K forward with an insane effect would be ridiculous. Yeah, that would that would throw off balance of the game entirely. Yeah. And again, I so if we do see this, yes, I agree that it would. I'd like to see it happen, yeah. but like maybe last set, maybe yeah, last it two sets. It would be busted. Like, like again, they'd o announce you. Know, oh, okay, we're we're on Opus Twenty One. Mm -hmm. We're ramping things down. Here we're gonna give you all this dumb shit from chapters. Yeah. Opus Twenty Four, Twenty Five. There you go. Yeah. It's, so it's over. Here, mm -hmm. here it is. Hate, yeah. hate, hate us. We're done. Also, I highly encourage anyone who's listening to this to look up the art for these cards. Oh, yeah. The art for the combination is all a mono, and it's beautiful. Oh, my God. The Red 13 Cloud card just looks great. There's a Renoa Squall one, I think, that was in Wind of all flavors. Okay, <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> I can't remember what the other ones were, but, yeah, they were interesting. They were weird, and they were I, It's awesome. a mono. That's yeah. all we got to say. Because being able to to exile cards from your graveyard to reduce the cost, it reminds me of Delve from Magic. And mm, Delve is yeah. historically broken yeah. and really, really good. I mean, that's why Treasure Cruise is, like, banned everywhere. <laughs> um, but it's just so... I don't know. I just wish we could, like, actually see this. Like, it's... Right? So... But, yeah, it would have to be... Because, to be fair, the only thing that kind of evens it out is it requires a lot of setup. Because mm -hmm. you need to have them already in your graveyard before you discard for the effects. Yeah, but let's be real. Yeah. I mean, historically, setup boards... Setting up a board isn't that bad in yeah. this game. And setting up a graveyard isn't terrible. Oh, either. setting up a graveyard's easy now. Yeah, like that Squall Renoa would basically have to be instantly banned. Because you could just fetch the stuff out with Maga Sisters. Yeah, like, or it's... you... Yeah, because you could just search discard stuff, right? Yeah. And then just keep discarding. Okay, I'm on my last one. All right, cool. Put it on Boom. the field. Yeah. And now, you know, I, I paid the discount cost, but I'm going to recur the other one. Yeah. Special it. Re yeah. Rinse, repeat. Yeah. Like, like, oh no, all my clouds got broken. And I pitched Red 13s to play the cloud. Here's a one-drop hasty 9K. Yeah. Like, and can you imagine recurring? Like, ha you, you'd have to make the special remove this card from game instead of put it in the break zone for the yeah. effect cost yeah and then do the effect yeah because getting it back in any capacity would be filthy yeah absolutely disgusting yeah so once again we won't see it i love it i love it it's stuff. a cool There's, idea it's an awesome idea but, but you can never balance it it's right it's so broken the cards will either have to be so like all basically borderline unplayable mm -hmm. or i don't know i have faith in the team i think oh, they i do can too do it but it's going to be rough. I think they know better. Yeah. They know yeah, better. That's They're intelligent they know enough. Better. They're yeah. wise enough. Yeah. Okay. So to move in back into the yeah, realm of possibility. <laughs> uh, so we have level up, which... Uh, wait, as you I just skipped one entirely. Oh, wait, I did? Oh, yeah. yeah drop change. Sorry. Troglodyte. Oops. Oops, Daisy. So uh, this effect always... Or, blah. Sorry. I got too excited You want, off you want me to talk, Ty? You want go me to for do... it. Go okay, for it. Okay, I, I will narrate this one. Right. Uh, the ef This effect allows a backup to swap with another backup of the same job, which is always standard unit by paying a cost. These cards have simple ETBs when entering that are made better if their job changed into it. Uh, this effect can only be used during your turn. I damn well hope so. <laughs> while, s while a slow effect... The job changed effect can be pretty good, allowing a player to cycle through their deck and be able to get stronger ETBs off of backups that already have done their job, which Sorry. is important. Sorry, could you imagine if it was just like, oh, I'm blocking with this, anyway, I'm swapping it, I'm killing that? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. That, that's too much combat trick. Yeah. That's too, it's too much. Yeah. Uh, so the example card here is going to be the Corsair. It's a two drop standard unit water backup. Job change costs three. One water and uh, then white. Yeah. No, like any color. Um, so move course out of the break zone uh, as the cost, right? So you're killing it to yeah. do the thing after paying three. Uh, when Corsair is played onto the field, draw one card, then discard a card from your hand. If Corsair comes into the field due to job change, draw two cards instead, then discard one. Yeah. So that's actually awesome. Yeah. I it, really like that. It was interesting effects, and it wasn't broken no it, like yeah. all of them were pretty deep i know that there was one that it was kind of like our black mage where it's mm -hmm. uh to put down reduce something by 4k yep but it reduced something by 7k if it got job changed into hmm. it, it cost three instead but that was kind of like an on curve effect that was good honestly i yeah. actually almost wish they had put this at a lower you know at a lower level lower capacity yeah uh in instead of damage 
damage keyword. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually wouldn't have minded that. Not yeah. that I have anything against damage keyword. It's great, actually. It, I'm yeah. glad they made it more concise. I'm also glad that it's coming back. Oh, yeah. Took long enough, right? Um, <laughs> what do you mean took long enough? It's been around for... It started in Opus 10. And now what? they're bringing it to Opus 11. Shh. <laughs> Obviously, we know something that they don't know. Yeah. We don't know that they're also putting it into o Opus 17. Yeah. <laughs> So remember that thing Ty said about the DeLorean? <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in mind. We're gonna come back to that yeah. and to the and to the current time. Yeah. Anyway, uh, will we see this in FFTCG? It can happen. Uh, like once again, you're gonna hear this a lot. I mean, they've already heard it a bit. Right. It could happen in a cycle. It's any cycle. They, they could so easily just be an opus where there's just a cycle of this. Yeah, this definitely deserves just one or two isolated cycles. Yeah. Done with it. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, too many of too much. There is so, too much of a good thing, yeah. right? It, that yeah. Yeah. Because it happens at sorcery speed, it's going to be a lot harder to abuse. Because um, you're going to... But at the same time, it does let you kind of thin your deck faster. Yeah. Which, in this game, depending, can be kind of a double-edged sword. But, but also mostly it's, it's going to be good. It's also a really good way of, you know, making sure things happen on your turn instead of just kind of waiting for your opponent's turn or end step yeah. or going into combat, whatever, before you start. Yeah. So, I, I like that. It would kind of... Um, yeah, it would just kind of force your turn plays. Yeah. Which I think in the current state of the game, there's not necessarily as much of. Yeah. So I shift back to that. I, I personally wouldn't mind. Yeah. Um, and now you can now you can skip yeah. ahead time. I got, I got now excited. you can go. Yeah. Okay, so level up. Uh, a card with this trait can be exchanged for another card of the same name after they have either broken an enemy forward or dealt damage directly to the opponent. That might sound familiar. To do so, you must place the card with the level up to the break zone, and then search your deck for the card you want to level up and place it into the field in dull mode. Shuffle your deck afterwards. So this was an interesting mechanic that we've only that we've actually seen already, uh, and it was on Palum and Opus Two. Uh, so level up allows a good way to cheat certain cards that would otherwise be hard to like justify playing for their normal cost. But at the same time, it's kind of tricky because certain cards may be too good with the level up feature, but it also allows any forward of the same name. Uh, but at the same time, having to swing in for damage or mm -hmm. having to do that effect where you break something is still kind of hard. That's risky. It is risky. Yeah, it's a like, risk reward system. And we saw that on um, we saw that on Palum where he has this ability where he can deal two K to something and then you can get the level up, but it's not good enough like mm -hmm. it wasn't obviously that palum saw a little play in wonder twins back in the day yeah but it hasn't since despite the fact that it has a lot of good targets you've got five drop palum you've got three drop palum like there's good cards to do it with it's just so finicky and this was in chapters this was originally seen on uh just a few cards uh and almost all of them were final fantasy six <laughs> we're gonna get kind of a bit more into that and you'll kind of see why but yeah so it was weird so an example card is lock Two drop 4k wind forward, treasure hunter. It's so weird to think of a lock in wind. Uh, <laughs> level up. After lock has attacked with, in a party with name Celis, any forward you control can't be blocked until the end of turn. So that's a good effect. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, Whoa. But that level up. So you basically get to exchange your two drop 4k forward, which is already understated, for a probably better lock. Mm hmm. Like, I could, that would be broken in our current game. Oh, God, yeah. But oh, that'd be nasty. at the same time, it's not terribly hard to get rid of a 2-drop 4K. <laughs> True. Um, and 2-drop 4K without a good ETB is a little, eh. Um, but will we see this in FFTCG? It has potential. Uh, assuming it's on the right cards, characters like Pelham and Porum are perfect for this effect, but um, cards with better names and effects could be kind of broken with it. Like, I, I'm going to use ex this example a lot, I feel, but Cloud. Is I was about one. to say Cloud. If there was because... a two-drop Cloud that was, like, tap deal 1k to something, and then it had level up on it, mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, I'm going to ping that to make sure it dies. Cloud's going to... Here's a five-drop Cloud. Yep, like, and it's... I was thinking, cause I was, yeah, because that, I mean, that does very well fit in flavor, right? Yeah. You go with the whole uh, crisis course situation, and then, yeah. boom, into the full powered cloud yeah. so yeah 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 that it's, would work it's great for flavor oh yeah it's just it, it would probably be too good 
Only uh, because they'd be... have to really watch out what card what card names are. On. Yeah, you'd be you'd be scared to print another version of that character in the future mm -hmm. just for raw fear of oh no, can you level up into this too well? Yeah. Like yeah, you'd do Cloud. You'd probably do Hope from thirteen. Yeah. Um, That'd be interesting. A Vivi, I'm sure, because yeah. he gets you know gets his yeah. stuff going later on. Yeah. So, yeah like, it... Right now in the game, there's a couple cards that I would work with, mm -hmm. but. It, it, you, they'd still have to be careful with it going forward. Yeah. So it has potential, and like I said, we've already seen it on Pelham and Porum, mm -hmm. which is awesome. But, eh, it's. Yeah, I think eh. it should stay like exclusive to Pelham and Porum. Like that'd, that'd be, be really cool. That'd be awesome. Yeah. But we'll see. Um, and then moving on to the next one. Oh, we, oh is this uh, Yu-Gi-Oh? Do they, do they mix <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh with with Final Fantasy? Oh no, Yu-Gi-Oh! You got Yu-Gi-Oh in my Final Fantasy. Yeah, Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy in my Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh. <laughs> so this is Link. <laughs> we are in the Link era, Eric. Yeah, yeah. yeah. God, this is gonna date the episode because now we're like, oh, we're in Link era, Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh, and then someone. Like, a year down the line, just gonna be like, oh, it's all about red cards now. Yeah, or... Master Roll, like, 9 came out yeah. over a summer. Yeah, man, Galaxy cards, like, <laughs> they're still talking about links that came out, like, years ago. But, uh... <laughs> frogs are back. <laughs> frogs are back for the fourth time. Um, so do you want to do Link? Sure. Uh, a card with this trait enables the player to play it to the field, a forward of the specified cost and element from your hand without paying their cost. For example, if something with the trait uh, specified Link Earth 2, then in addition to the card itself, you can play an Earth element forward of cost 2 or less. Uh, similar to effects we've seen in cards like Yang, Godot, Vanille, uh, a couple of the Warrior Lights, yeah. um, and usually uh, gives the original card played an additional effect. Uh, allows for multicolored decks to operate much more organically. Um, which, it, that double-edged sword there, I yeah. can see a lot of risk in that from a design perspective. Uh, though, any effect that can cheat out cards without paying their CP cost can be a slippery slope. And it's easily a powerful effect if the link gets above uh, cost 2 for the free play. Yeah. Uh, which we, I think we could all surmise that on our own here. Um, that, that is very quick, that's a quick inference. Um, so Ty, do you want to cover the example card here? Yeah, so Eduardo, a 3-drop 7k Ice Forward Bard. Uh, Link, Ice 3, Earth 3, Lightning 3. So, but that doesn't mean that you get to play all of those. You get to choose one. Okay, you, so, you saw yeah. my face there. I yeah. was like, what? Yeah. Oh, like, could you imagine <laughs> three for... Uh, three In, for four forwards. That, that's an yeah. absolute must include in any swarm yeah. deck. Jesus. Uh, when an earth or lightning element forward is played onto the field due to Eduardo's effect, choose one dull forward, break it. Like, that's a really oh, good effect. That's strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, as I... And then, will we see this in FFTCG? The fun thing is we kind of already are. Mm -hmm. It's weird. So, we already essentially have it in the game, and we've seen a bit of a cycle of it already. Uh, we've seen this on Shulk, I'll say it, and several other cards uh, that have seen some amount of play. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably, we'll probably not see this as a keyword, only because we already have it on cards. Yeah. Uh, but a big thing that I notice about our current game is they're kind of moving away from... Oh, you get to do this and you get this effect? Yeah. Only because Alcid was just so good. Yeah, they realized that those double effect cards uh, need to be kind of kept on a short leash. Yeah. Um, so, once again, Alcid is like a great, great example of this. But other cards in the same cycle haven't seen too much play. Like mm -hmm. Shulk. Shulk's an interesting card. Oh, yeah. But because it has to play a two drop of any element other than ice to get the discard is kind of meh. Yeah. Well, that and the fact that... The fact that um, Two drops, typically for forwards, don't do a whole lot. Yeah. I mean, especially when Shulk came out, too. That was a borderline useless effect at the time. Yeah. Like, it was good yeah. to get something out, but at the same time, yeah. Eh? Like, it, if it, you're not playing Illua, what's yeah. the point? It was okay because it was Opus 2. <laughs> yeah. But now we're so far... I wouldn't be surprised if, surprised if there was just some random deck that it was like, oh, Shulk is absolutely broken in this. Because you get to discard and play something free. Dude, but, Shulk Godot. Shulk, combo uh, deck oh, that'd be hilarious ice fire yeah. we're making it happen yeah but basically like it's it's kind of already in effect it's kind of not it, i don't think it'll ever be a keyword yeah no um, it, it's useless as a keyword now yeah. uh but yeah it 
it's a fun effect. Mm -hmm. Not too broken as long as they kind of keep the reins in on it. And yeah. so far, they've been doing a really good job. Oh, Alsid, yeah. Alsid is literally the only card that has seen continued play with the effect. Yeah. So we'll move on to the next keyword called Junction. Yeah, this is another kind of goofy one. Conjunction, Junction, what's your function? All right, who's doing this one? Uh, rock, paper, scissors, go. All right. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors go. go. All right, there All right go. cool, I got it. Uh, so to Junction, you must first pay the cost of, and then exile, exclude, whatever, yeah. uh, an Eidolon from your hand. The card using the Junction ability gains Junction status. What happens when a card gains Junction status depends entirely on the card in question. Any other effect is counted as a separate auto ability. Ugh. <laughs> Also note that while you can use the Junction ability again by paying for his cost, you can't remove from game another Eidolon or gain another Junction status while the previous one is still in effect. So there's no stacking, which is nice. Yeah. Um, a Junction is considered broken only if the Eidolon removed from game by, that, by use of that Junction is returned to the game from exclusion. In this case, you can use Junction again normally. So that huh. was... That's a... That was some word spaghetti. That was so, wow. What did you? What were you doing when writing that? Are you ready for this? Yeah, that's a direct like copy. Really? From like the rules. Here I'm thinking yeah. you summarized it and oh, paraphrased. Oh God, no. So Ugh, no wonder it's so sloppy. I'm sorry, so, I doubted you. Yeah. So here's how. So here's the easy way to explain it. So basically, when you play or when you do the junction effect, you exile a summon from your hand. Or you remove it from game. And then it just has just a static ability. It's kind of like equipping it yeah. to it. But instead you just remove it from the game. And then if it's removed from removed from the game, which I think only a couple cards did, well, um, it it just would lose the effect. Mm -hmm. So think of it kind of like um, Fordola. Yeah. If As long as that uh, backup is exiled, Fordola has this effect. Yep. Um, so basically it lets you remove from play a summon in your hand to give a forward a junction ability. Which usually entails 2k power and then another better effect. You're essentially paying 4 to make a vanilla forward much better. Okay. Uh, and it was present in Chapter 13, but no other set. Wow. That's a running theme. Yeah, <laughs> um, right? Oh yeah, I was here, but never again. Uh, so the example card is Renoa, 3 drop, 7k win forward, job witch. Um, for 1 wind, junction and Eidolon a a a to Renoa. When Renoa is junctioning... She gains 2k power and the ability, after Renoa has attacked, break all characters of cost 5 or more your opponent controls, and Renoa cannot be chosen by Adolans and won't receive damage from them. Also, after Renoa has junctioned, break all characters of cost 5 or more. So that's a really good card, obviously. Yeah. Because you just get to say, oh, there goes your Sephiroth and Kuja. There mm -hmm. goes your Sephiroth and Sid Austin. Like, or, yeah, Sid Augustine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... That's a really good effect, but you're still, uh, you're still kind of paying five for a seven k win forward. Obviously, once again, really yeah. good effect that would see play. Um, but the only issue is that you have to have a summon in hand. I can see going through more and more of these. I can see why a lot of these um, keywords were Grandpa Simpson walking into the into the uh, burlesque house. You know, just the in, drop your hat, pick up your hat, and leave. Yeah. Because man, if this stuff had continued. Oh, yeah, that's it's, just not that's just not right. Yeah, because the only issue with it, it, obviously, it's really good, right? Yeah, right. And Renoa had a pretty good effect. Some of the other ones were also really good. Mm -hmm. Um, but this is number one. This is easy to do, and the only problem is that the low end of it is just a vanilla forward. Right. And obviously, that's not great. That's not good at all. But you're you're never gonna have to do that. Like having a having to have a summon in hand kind of sucks. But let's be real, who's not gripping a summon at most points of the game anyway if exactly. you're smart? It completely depends on your color. Because if, like, that Renoa was an ice, obviously still really good effect. Oh, yeah. But ice isn't running as many summons. Because mm -hmm. you're basically running Glossia and something else. Yeah. You could run more just for Renoa, but then you're kind of nerfing your deck. Yeah, at that point one you're one gimping card. yourself. But in wind... But in wind, when you're running three duo bolos, if you're running Weewa, you're running Valifors. Mm -hmm. You could be running Alexander. Famfritz. Famfritz. Like, there's tons of cards because mind you it doesn't when you junction you don't have to use the same color yeah it's and just a it's just a summon yeah. idol and whatever you would call yeah. it and we're slowly entering we're seeing more summon heavy decks so if this was introduced to the game now this would be 
busted. Oh, this would be disgusting. Because any junction effect that was halfway decent would be like, oh, yeah. That, yep, nope. That's objectively game breaking. Must play, yeah. Yep. Because ultimately, that Renoa is a 5-drop five, five 9k. Yeah. So it's on curve. And then on top of that, it breaks all characters that cost 5 or more. And it can't be chosen by summons or abilities. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a little gross. That's, that's pretty gross. a little bit beyond gross in my opinion. Yeah. So, will we ever see this in FFTCG? Probably not. It's a little too complicated. It's pretty unnecessary. The effects are pretty good, but it's too much card text for a keyword. Because, yeah. Because, like, that entire paragraph was just... That was just copy pasted. Yeah. Like that wasn't me like trying to summarize it. Yeah, that was you just, just can't, copy pasted. You can't print that on a card. You can't put yeah. that in a manual. Like that manual sheet is already messy enough. And, yeah. 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 So this so. effect. So obviously it's a good effect. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like one or two cards that had it but didn't call it junctioning. Well, right, just well, said, I mean, hey, by the way, exile is yeah. when you play this, it gets X effective. Like you, you said, we have Fordola. Yeah. Which I can see another character like Terra. Yeah. We could see a Terra that might have something like this. That would be cool. Get yeah. rid of a summon, like our, remove three summons from your break zone yeah. from the game. As long as I remove, Terra has this effect. Yeah. That would be awesome. I would love it. Yeah. And then also an effect that it's like opponent can pay five, put a remove from summon or remove from remove game one. Yeah. And as, oh, yeah. and as they come back, it, the effect gets weaker or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. would be really cool. Yeah. This is just kind of, oh, we should do an episode about just like ideas for. <laughs> we still have, we, we have the. We have the Excel sheet sitting yeah. in our drive. Yeah, yeah, I know. But, like, just ideas. For, not specific cards, but, mm -hmm. like, ideas for just, like, random Concept, mechanics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be uh, awesome. Yeah, but, so, obviously, this is too good. Um, if it ever would kind of move over, it'd be severely weakened. It'd be just, yeah. like, a, it'd be like a Fordola. Because mm -hmm. Fordola's a really good card, but the fact that you have to break, or you have to remove a backup, mm -hmm. and being able to just exclude a card from a hand, basically yeah. paying two extra, it's good. It's really good, and that's yeah. probably why we won't ever see it. Yeah, it's... Yeah. No, I got nothing really useful to add there. It's just good. <laughs> yeah. So, moving on, we have one of the quicker ones, and we're about, you know, three and a half, four-fifths from the end here, so yeah. hang in there, everybody. We're, we're getting to the end. Just home yeah. stretch now. I mean, we just hit 47, or we're just a bit over 47 minutes. Ish. Uh, 48 now. Don't forget, we recorded for a while beforehand, so yeah, we just kind of yeah, jerking never, around, yeah. so... Um, anywho, we, uh, we're gonna kick it into Overdrive. <laughs> I'm funny. You sound like a radio host. We're gonna kick it into Overdrive. Here's the Nickelback Hour. Sorry. Six sound effects <laughs> that may have no relation to each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Sorry. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I hate us. <laughs> oh, like, sorry. Whoa. We just need a podcast where we just make fun of radio hosts for a solid, like, half hour. Anyway, Overdrive. Uh, <laughs> so, rain it back. Oh, no, we need a, we need a gear shift sound. Yeah. Someone on a manual of transmission. Yeah. All right, so Overdrive. Uh, it's an auto ability that can be activated by paying for the cost while playing the card from your hand onto the field. Uh, it's it's uh, like Overload in, not, well, not quite in Hearthstone. But I, I reference it in something. You'll yeah, see. so, oh, Kicker and MTG. There yeah. we go. I knew I was thinking of something similar. Yeah. Um, so an Overdrive card cannot be used uh, if, paying, if playing the card onto the field from elsewhere than the hand, which is a good way to balance that, because, yeah. wow. Also, uh, Overload, I think, was also a magic mechanic that basically operated the same way. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you were right. It ba operated the exact same way. The only difference is that instead of it targeting one thing, it targeted everything. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, so Overload's another good example, but it's kind of kicker from yeah, MTG. it's a kicker. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, uh, just not multi-pay, or yeah. is it? Uh, I couldn't find any examples of multi. -pay. Okay, cool. So we're gonna assume that it wasn't multi or multi payable. Yeah. Uh, and it was introduced in chapter seven, uh, present in the game until the end, chapter fifteen. Yeah. Um, it's not much to s there's not much to say about it. Uh, it's basically just kicker. Um, that some cards had ad some cards had additional overdrives. Uh, some of which had different color costs, which I actually think that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, kind of like the multicolor, the the Swiss Army knife Gilgameshes. Yeah. For example, or yeah. the uh, or the Kryle, uh, that has the lightning so the specials, and fire specials. Yeah. yeah. Despite it being Earth. Uh, yeah. right. 
So uh, the example card, I'll let Ty take care of that one. All right, so Fang, uh, I forgot to write her power, but Fang, Forward Thief. Um, so Overdrive was... Uh, one fire? Yeah, one fire. When Fang enters the field, choose up to two forwards, divide onto them 7,000 damage as you wish, wish in blocks of 1,000. Mm -hmm. And then the other Overdrive is one Earth. When Fang is put onto the field, choose one idol... I'm just going to call it summon. You choose one summon in your break zone, place it into your hand. When a forward is moved from the field of the break zone, choose one forward, it gains haste until end of turn. So <laughs> it's it has an interesting effect, right? Yeah, I so kind of like that. Yeah, so it kind of lets you diversify a card. Yeah, that... that no, go ahead. Yeah, uh, that thing wasn't a vanilla, because it had that effect that as one of forwards moved from field to break zone, choose one thing, give it haste. Yeah. Like, that's... It's interesting. That's... um That reminds me of the last well... The fire ice last well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. I wouldn't mind seeing this. Yeah. And then, will we see it in FFTG? Eh. It's a simple enough effect that it could really be implemented. Yeah. It's, the big thing about it is it's not hard to balance. Like, Magic has included Kicker tons of times. Mm -hmm. And there's been some really good Kicker cards, and there's been some ridiculous Overload cards, like Cyclonic Rift. Uh, <laughs> I, I we're, I'm gonna get into that one of these days on episode like 100. I'm gonna talk about anyway. Uh, we'll have Ty, to get, we're never getting to 100. Yeah, this yeah. is our last episode. Oh, duh, I forgot. When do we do our ED, <laughs> Final Fantasy EDH episode? <laughs> we do our uh, reunion episode yeah. six years from now. Um, but it's it's good. It, it's good. It kind of encourages uh. Multicolor decks, which is always mm -hmm. kind of fun. That's something I love to see in card games. Oh yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, so it could show up. Uh, I don't know if it'd have the same name, obviously. Like, none of this is, like, confirmed. Like, I really doubt that they would one for one copy. I, no, but... I think they would copy the, the keyword there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it would, it's fitting enough. I yeah. mean, they've kept using it in, like, video games long enough, so yeah. why not, yeah. right? But, yeah, so it's good. Um, I'd like to see it. It's it's simple enough. It's easy enough to understand. It's If, if they keep it isolated enough, yeah. I would like to see it, too. Yeah. Yeah. But moving on to the next one, which sounds kick-ass. Yeah. I'll let you cover it. All right, cool. War God. All right, get ready War for another... War God. <laughs> get ready for another overly complicated effect. Yeah, here we here we go, guys. Yeah. Uh, a War God is a special kind of Eidolon card. In addition to being summoned like a normal Eidolon, you can sacrifice one card. The card type is specified. For example, War God Class 0 requires a card with the Class 0 job from the field for the War God. The sacrificial card CP cost lessens the card the CP cost of the War God being summoned. Note that the cost cannot become less than one. Yeah. So basically it just lets you sack a forward to reduce the cost. Alright, cool. So I'm registered for voice acting now, right? I can <laughs> do it. Um, I'm officially a... Uh, I'm, I'm ready for book on tape. Get, re get ready for the high-res emails to start rolling in. <laughs> yeah, uh, right? <laughs> uh, so originally it came up in Chapter 4, and then it showed up again in Chapter 10, and was only seen on Type 0 cards, huh. <laughs> which was Cadets and Ajito Agents. Hmm. I, I'm sure that that has some sort of flavor with the game. Yeah, something uh, tells me that's got to be a flavor thing. Yeah, I still need to play Type uh, Type 0. or Yeah, yeah, yeah Type 0. Yeah. So, for example, Shiva, 3-drop Ice Summon, War God, a Jito Cadet, choose one action ability or one auto ability, avoid its effect, after make the doll, make doll the character who activated it, a uh, direct translation by the way. I was going to say, that's a uh, that's translation. It cannot sure. become active during the opponent's next phase. So, don't, fr don't, don't freeze, freeze it. Don't freeze it, yeah. yeah. Uh, don't freeze negate its effect. Like, that's that's a good enough effect. Yeah. I mean, you could just pop a two drop forward and yeah. be like, oh, this only costs one. Um, so, if, will we see it? I wouldn't mind it. Yeah. As it, again, rain. Keep it. Keep it chill and calm. Give it yeah. very, very select usage. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see this. I think I it's can, possible. I can imagine a card that's just kind of like uh, overcosted, like a Diabolos that costs like eight, mm -hmm. but you can sack a forward to reduce the cost. So yeah. you could eventually, like, there's a lot of good mm -hmm. things that could team up with that. Like a good example is like, oh, I swing with Magus Sisters. You don't block, and then I'll play once again. Let's use like mm -hmm. a nine drop or a eight drop. Uh, Diabolus is sure. an example. Like, oh, I'm going to play this Diabolus, sack my Maga Sister, it costs four less. I get the Maga Sister back because it's Maga Sister and it's mm -hmm. good. And then I get a four drop Diabolus. Yeah, or like repeat the effect of this of this summon or something. Yeah. Like, that'd be awesome. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, I'm going to say the same thing I keep saying. We're probably not going to see this mm -hmm. on a keyword, 
But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like a cycle of summons that was like, oh, you could sack a forward, reduce the cost of this by the forward. Dude, I would love an Odin with this kind of effect. That would oh my, and you, just put this on any Odin. Yeah. Oh. Could you imagine just a ten drop Odin that's just uh sacrifice a forward, reduce the cost of this card by Sacrifice a lightning Sarah or Noel. Oh, oh. get this effect twice. See, yeah, because that'd be interesting. Because I feel like something about this is they'd have to I think this is the only time I'm gonna say this. They don't need it to be so narrow. Yeah. I, I could see them making it narrow. Right, well, right, but, for flavor yeah. purposes. But, but like, it would kind of basically make this, like, kind of archetype. So, right. like, for example, if you saw this, let's say there was, like, a Waff summon. Mm -hmm. If there was, like, a Waff that it was, like, sacrifice a, like, category Waff card, like, obviously that'd be really good because mm -hmm. we already have Waff as yeah. a deck. And By Seraphy, yeah. even the effect. <laughs> and then it'd be the same thing with, uh, like, Opus, or not Opus 10, uh, category 10 cards. Mm-hmm. Because it's just, you already have so many... I can imagine, like, sacrificing Yuna for this, like, ridiculous yeah. Valifor. Um, there's a lot of flavor ways that they could explore this. Oh, yeah, this, this, this open... Yeah. That would open a lot of doors. I would yeah. love to see that. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be called War Gun. Right. It'd be... It could be something kind of interesting. Oh, something... Mm, I don't know. I don't know the flavor of Final Fantasy X, so feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, seeing this on, like, the Shadow Eidolons... Oh. Or the evil Adolans. Yeah, Or yeah, any yeah. of those. I'd also love to see an anima with this. Anyway. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's cool. Yeah. It's an interesting idea, and it's not mm -hmm. really busted. And then we're going to talk about the weirdest one. Yeah, this one, uh, I saw the title. I'm yeah. like, Ty, is that a typo? Nope. Yeah. That's so, just what it is. In my opinion, it's the weirdest one, because I kept seeing it when I was doing research before I like actually looked into it. Yeah. And it wasn't... Mind you, uh, I should probably list it here, but our my source for this was the Crystarium. Okay. That has all the chapter cards with the rough translations. We'll link it in the description. Yeah. Um, and they had a page that explained all the rules, and that's where a lot of this is kind of copy-pasted mm -hmm. from. So there were some that it was kind of rough, so I've uh, changed it a bit. But P was never explained, and I never found out why. Okay. And it's not talked about at all. So here's what I found out about it. So, <laughs> it's so, it's just called P, and we're trying to figure out why. Yeah. Because I have no clue. Beats and me. I ha I can't find any sources on if why. If anybody's got yeah. some deep knowledge on the title it's from, which yeah. is what we'll get to. Yeah. Reach out to us. But, so, uh, t yeah, if you've played six, I'm going to spoil, this is basically exclusive, this is exclusive to six characters. Yeah. Um, a tag that is usually in f instead of the EX symbol, so that means that, like, no Category 6 cards had EXs. Mm -hmm. um, it only appeared on Final Fantasy 6 cards, and only cards from Final Fantasy 6, and then cards had effects that would trigger or change depending on whether or not you control the forward with P on it. Um, that sounded silly. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But it was usually... I didn't put it in an example card because they were all pretty bad. Okay. <laughs> like, it was just... It was like, oh, if you have a card that has P on it, this card has haste. Hmm. If you have a card that has P on it, um, this card gains, like, 1,000 power for, uh, and haste. Or, like, it'll just hmm. be something... Or it's like, if this card has P on it, give, choose a forward, give a brave. Like, it's... Hmm. That was the effects. It was just kind of simple. And you saw it kind of around, but you always saw it on... Uh, category six cards. Uh, yeah, I was about to ask: Is it was it a cycle, at all? That's the thing. Is it was no. in multiple sets. It was multiple sets. Huh. And it was just six characters. I'm pretty sure it was multiple sets. I I have to double check. All right, we we need some people yeah. to do some digging for us. We would yeah. really love to revisit this. Yeah, well, at so, least I would. Yeah, if you have chapters knowledge, if you competed in chapters, if you know the reasoning behind these and the design behind these please tell us yeah because they were a mystery to me for so long so long i'm baffled and now it's just weird and you I, mentioned it doesn't like, it, re it replaces the ex symbol right yeah so none of those cards had exes yeah there was no like pex effect if you will yeah it, <laughs> what or EXP why effects, why sorry. would they have some sort of isolated yeah i i okay i'm i'm lost i'm Remember? I had some sort of exp explanation for it, but I forgot it. I, because the P has to stand for something. Yeah, it right. Has to stand for something. All right, but um, to move on, we're actually done with chapters. Yep. We're gonna move on to things that Opus has the chapter doesn't. And since I've written this, uh, we've actually had a couple things introduced. Mm -hmm. But we'll start with the one thing that I wrote, and that's titles. So this is something that's just integral. It's just part of our game. Like yeah. We're used to like, oh, category X card, category Yeah, it's 13. kind of been there since the beginning it for had, us. Like the first, uh, um, 
the Ice Lightning first starter deck mm -hmm. had mod 13, search a yeah. category 13 right. forward, add it to your hand. So, uh, in our current game of chap, or in the current game of cha chapters, wait, oh, I messed up, sorry. In our <laughs> current game of Opus, each card has a category which indicated where they originate from, uh, but this wasn't present in chapters, as cards opted to search for certain cards instead of category blank. Yeah. Uh, and there was something that couldn't really be or this is something that couldn't really be treated after a couple sets because they'd have to introduce like an element to the uh, layout of the card. Yeah. But at the same time, they probably could have done it and it wouldn't have affected gameplay. There's play certain whatsoever. ways they could have done it, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm sure people would figure out what characters are from what game if they didn't reprint the cards. Yeah. Like, eh, doable. Yeah. It, it's weird. Like, it's it wouldn't be hard. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just so integral to our current game because you have so many good cards yeah, we like, can't imagine living without yeah, it yeah like starter deck jesse mog 13 um all the opus 10 or mm -hmm. the category 10 searchers like, yeah there's tons of cards that search for just oh category yeah, X. literally anything type zero rampier yeah is just play category 11 card mm -hmm. like there's tons of it so the whole waff deck the whole waff deck, deck category waff like it's it's weird to think that there was a game that didn't have this mm -hmm. and now we do yeah and, it, it would the game would seem so clunky without it. Yeah. And then the other two ones that I don't have listed, um, first one is Damage. Yep, that one's so, recent. There were times... Yeah, it, it's recent. And it's funny because it's kind of been around in Opuses so far. Where right. We had, like, the Ultimacia. Oh, if you have five damage, you get to choose two of these effects. Yep. Or, like, oh, hey, if you're on X damage, you get this effect. Um, but to have Damage as a keyword and nice little italicized is nice. That was something that wasn't in the original. It wasn't a keyword whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It just... I know that there were a couple cards that had it, but it was nothing... Once again, it wasn't a keyword. It was right. just, oh, if you're at 4 damage, you get this additional yep. little effect. Or, oh, this shield's 9k instead. Mm -hmm. um, and then now... Like, we're going to be brief with these only because, you know, you know what it is. Yeah, if you're if you're listening to this, you're likely up to date on things, and yeah. you've been playing the game at least a little bit. Yeah. You've seen these cards, we're, yeah. we're assuming. And that was introduced in Opus 10, which we, we right. know about. Like, it's... Yeah. Um, Opus 10... Yeah, it's, it's Opus 10. And then now in Opus 11, we're getting counters, which is something that we didn't see in uh, mm -hmm. chapters. And um, as I mentioned before, Worlds was last week. And something that I'm really happy to see is the Dottaluma, mm -hmm. because it's an Opus 11 card with the damage feature. So that means that unlike chapters, we're not getting these like set-exclusive uh, keywords, and then they're just yeah. gone. So, because I personally love damage. I really like it. Mm -hmm. I run like zero cards with it but it's cool but it's cool like the squall's really cool with mm -hmm. it like there's oh, tons yeah. of cards that operate very well it made a really interesting sealed environment oh yeah it made a great sealed environment um so uh, we have that and then now in opus 11 we're getting counters which is something and i'm else really curious to see how they evolve those because i yeah. don't i don't typically like the idea of counters it feels too slow to me it feels really wonky and easily counterable part of the pun. yeah yeah um but that being said i mean it's a new addition to the game that's going to shake things up and i'm always i'm always eager for new things to be introduced so we can try something yeah i have faith where i feel like I, i'm kind of in that same boat where i'm not a big fan of counters only because i i don't like having dice on everything <laughs> like i've played enough edh where it's just like okay i have um I've gotten my two counters onto my gemstone mines, and then I also have two counters on my uh, vivid creek. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, my Muldrotha has a shield counter on it, so it can't die. And then on top of that, I have got this plus one aura that I need to counter for. <laughs> oh, I get to populate, which lets me double the counters on everything. Oh, I proliferate. I'm going to double the counters on everything. Like, it's... Or double's the wrong word. But I'm going right. to add one to everything. Yeah. Like, it's, it's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, our game is simple enough that I don't feel like it would be yeah. crazy. As long as they keep it, we've been, man, broken record, right? Yeah. Um, as long as they keep it simple enough yeah. and isolated enough, yeah. it'll be great. Yeah. I think it'll be great. Yeah. And I think we both have enough faith in them that yeah. it'll be fun. Right. Yeah. Because we have seen our first counter card, which was mm -hmm. the Mandragora. Yeah. Uh, and it looked cool. It looks cool. The, the ability, the, yeah. the way you get the counters on it looks fine. Yeah. Um, the, the abilities look balanced. Yeah. So far. Um, 
Everything about it seems all right. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see kind of going into the future on how will those go. And then, um, yeah, I think we're going to have an episode where we're going to talk about just kind of silly mechanic ideas. And then if we perchance get any of them right, we get to just sue Squeenix, obviously. Yeah. Obvious. <laughs> yeah, we can Hire just... us. Right? I, you can't dude. see it, but we're looking into the microphone right now. Yeah. No, wink, honestly, wink, honestly nudge, though, nudge. That, that'd be an amazing job. Oh, I would yeah. really freaking like that a lot. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome, just working on this game for uh, a few years until they decide to st- whether they're finished with it or not. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, we carry it into Opus 100. <laughs> just yeah, we we convince them to carry it that far. Everyone's just sick of it. Yeah. It's way overdone. Final Fantasy Seventeen's already out. Yeah, just so we can keep a job, right? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, but yeah. So that was kind of our review of chapters mechanics. Um, they're weird. Yeah, they're really chapters weird. is really looking back in retrospective. Yeah. Man, that game was funky. Yeah, because there were some that it's like okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like oh, overload, it's kicker. But in Final Fantasy, uh, it's just like oh combination <laughs> that requires like a page of text just to yep. explain and like there's a lot of really cool mechanics that chapters had and a lot of really good mechanics that chapters mm-hmm. had but they wouldn't translate well they wouldn't just like well. the text just like the text <laughs> yeah actually so. that's not fair i don't know if it's a fan translation or official yeah. i think it's a fan translation i'll be one of okay then that, that's not yeah. fair to rip on them then they did yeah. their best yeah I'm they sure. did their best uh shout outs to the crystarium i don't know if they're even around anymore beats me because but... it was funny because they were posting the opus cards up until like opus three and then there's just nothing yeah no i tried to do translation is hard yeah, yeah. like it, there's some languages that are simpler to translate than others but yeah. japanese and chinese and and all those far far eastern asian languages yeah the the syntax is so far removed yeah. from what we understand in english yeah. typically <laughs> see it's funny um I, we're kind of sidetracking i guess this is the end stuff yeah let's but, call this the uh, end yeah um when I, I've studied Chinese and Japanese, so Japanese has interesting, has kind of weird uh, syntax, but you kind of get used to it. Yeah. Chinese has the exact same syntax that we do. Hmm. It's just the fact that um, they don't have like an alphabet is what's right. so weird yeah. about it. And the fact that they have so many tones over their words. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, fun little, you know, Asia fact, or yeah. Asian language I, fact. I read a meme today that was like talking about languages and one of them was... Uh, it went through steps of getting more complex, and one uh-huh. of them was uh, talking about how Japanese formed as a language. Mm-hmm. To paraphrase the meme, it was basically, all right, we're going to do Chinese, but we're going to take away all these good functions of it, and we're going to bastardize it like four times, and then we're just going to decide that letters and words are the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And from what I've heard from like four different people about it, uh-huh. that's relatively accurate, if not yeah. condescending. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a bit condescending, but it's not too inaccurate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, so to wrap up this episode, um, wow, this is a, like already an hour long episode. Eh, um, they'll live. Yeah. Uh, so to kind of wrap it up, what mechanics do you want to see in FFTCG? Are there anything from chapters where you're just like, dude, War God sounds kick ass. We need it in an FFTCG. I mean, why do you think I read it in yeah. a dramatic, amazing dramatic, voice? Yeah. Or, you're, or you're just like, we absolutely need P. For some reason. We need yeah. P. We need P. P needs to come back. P. I need 10 locks with P on it. Because lock isn't good enough right now. I need P on me. P. I'm really glad that we have this wonderful uh, pup guard. <laughs> P on me, Tyler. P on me. <laughs> but yeah, so, I'm, like, just to kind of... P on me, I'm a thirsty little yeah. flower. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could get you with that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna have to I, edit the. I joke about it for one. a week, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So, is there any chapters mechanic that you want to see? Is there any just mechanic in general that you guys want to see? Feel free to throw it into the comments. We're happy to look at them and then steal them for our episode. Yeah, obviously you'll get credit. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, you'll get credit if we see one that's interesting enough. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. that's about it. Um, See you never yeah. is our last episode. Obviously, um, Oh, but it is worth to mention we're reviewing the surveys. Uh, we'll be getting to those in our next episode, most likely. In theory, yeah. Hopefully, theory, yeah. Uh, sooner rather than later. We yeah. are very appreciative of all the responses and answers. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll give all our shout-outs and thanks for that later. Yeah. So, all right. Bye, guys. Thank Bye. you. Three, two, two. 
one, let's jam. Sorry. 